Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, I'm going to touch on a subject. You know, I probably got pretty close to 150 videos. I don't think I've ever done one on uh, amateur radio clubs. So I'm going to try to do one today and uh, kind of talk about uh, ham radio clubs and uh, some of the pitfalls for newbies and uh, if you're a newbie in the hobby I would definitely recommend that one of the first things you do is to join a club. Now this may not be a long-term endeavor on your part uh, but anyway let's <laughs> Let's get into uh, six things that you have to look for or be aware of uh, when you walk in to a, as a first time meeting uh, at a new amateur radio ham club uh, and kind of some of the things you need to look for. So let me get my glasses on because I'm old and I can't see. And uh, we'll go through these six things. So, you got your tech license and uh, got you a little radio of some kind. And hopefully it's a mobile radio that's installed in your car. As you know, I always recommend that you buy a mobile radio first. Uh, set it up either in the ham shack or in your automobile. And just by doing that, that's going to teach you a lot of operational techniques uh, within the hobby, just by setting that up. Then second, go out there and get you a little handy talkie uh, for kind of a walking around radio. But uh, I always recommend that you step out, get a regular mobile radio if you're going to set it up in your shack. Uh, get a little power supply for it. You don't need to spend a lot of money. In fact, most parts of the country, you can simply get uh, something like a Kenwood 281A, uh, $140. Uh, it's a 2 meter, 65 watt mobile. And it would serve you very well uh, for most all of the repeaters around. You won't be able to hit the 70 centimeter repeaters, but uh, at least in my area and most areas, the two meter repeaters outnumber the 70 centimeter repeaters. That may not be true in your location, but you can look all this up on something called Radio Reference on the internet or uh, just by doing a little Googling uh, for your area and repeaters in your area and discover what's more prevalent, 2 meters or 70 centimeters. There'll be both of them, but one of them is going to be... Uh, in my case, many more 2 meters than there are 70 centimeters. So, with that said, as a little preface, let me give you six things you need to do. You do need to join uh, a radio club in your area. And, uh, you know, you might go through two or three of them before you find the right one. But here we go. Number one, how many members does it have? More is probably better. More is probably better. Not always, but more is usually better because in a large club, there won't be just one click. You know the click? Remember that in, uh, in grade school and high school? The click, and you weren't in the click, and you basically got ignored. Well, that will happen in some very small clubs, especially if they've been around a while and the members uh, really know each other and uh, they have more, they have a social basis, you know, more than a hobby basis, uh, technical basis uh, for the club. Uh, you might run into that. So what's the size of the club? More, in my opinion, is better. Number two, 
What happened to you on your first meeting when you attended your first meeting? What happened to you? Did you walk in and uh, nobody said hello? Uh, they just started the meeting and you just sat there and you know no one recognized you. Nobody asked your call sign. Nobody asked for any information about you. You know, hey, where do you live? Uh, uh, when did you get your license? Uh, what kind of radio do you have? You know, nobody was interested in you. So uh, a lot of clubs have this as a very bad habit. <clears throat> they might recognize you. Hey, who's that in the back there? We've never seen you before. Well, what's your name and your call sign? And you give it. Oh, okay, we're glad you came. And that, that'll be the end of it. So kind of take note of what happens to you uh, during the first time you walk into their meeting. Obviously, if you find one where they're really interested in you and what you might be interested in in the hobby, that might be one you want to stick around with for a while and uh, see what happens. Number three, did they have a presentation? Was the meeting more presentation and less business, or was it the other way around? Was the whole meeting just a business discussion about budgets and uh, we need to change the bylaws and uh, we have elections coming up and, you know, what happened? <clears throat> Was my, did they present something? And more importantly for you, did they present something that might be of interest to you? Now, you won't find this out in one meeting. But if it was a uh, kind of an interesting presentation, you know, maybe something you might be interested in, then maybe you need to go to another couple of meetings and see what the next presentations might be about. Uh, anyway, so is the meeting all about business and what's, you know, what the verbiage is in the uh, bylaws and we need to change the bylaws. You know, is it that or is it more about learning about ham radio? That'd be number three. Number four, were there any arguments during the meeting? Did the meeting turn into a uh, BS session? between several of the members where they were arguing between themselves on some um, point of minutia, either technically or business-wise, club business-wise, you know, uh, I kind of let the uh, arguing over something technically uh, slide. I let that slide a little bit because uh, as you'll find out, uh, ham radio operators, after they have a little time under their belt, uh, they get they have uh, opinions on everything. So, if you had ten hams in a room and you asked them asked them what color the sky was, you'd get ten different answers, maybe eleven different answers with ten people. I don't know, but I let that part of it slide. But if they start arguing about uh, what we're doing, and uh, I don't like what so-and-so is doing, you know, they're doing personal attacks in the meeting. You probably don't need to go back ever again to that club as long as uh, uh, whoever's running the club is still running it. So, uh, did they argue during the meeting? That would be number four. Number five. Do they have a way to communicate with the members uh, using the internet? So the question would be, you know, do they have a Yahoo group maybe or a Google Plus group that uh, they send communications out with and all the members can uh, comment online or uh, is everything done at the meeting? Yeah. <clears throat> I much prefer a club that has several methods of communications 
especially if they've gone so far as to get everybody's phone number and they have a, uh, for example, a phone number uh, call list in case there's some kind of emergency or weather event. If they're doing that, uh, that's great. Uh, some clubs don't have any method whatsoever of communicating with members. It's just kind of people calling each other on the phone, the ones they know, you know. And uh, I would avoid those kinds of clubs. Uh, I would avoid clubs, too, where uh, a large majority of the membership uh, refuses to post on a site like a Google, Google, Google group or a Yahoo group where you have, or a moderator has to approve you to be a member. I'm not talking about on Facebook. Uh, where anybody can uh, see what you're posting, basically. I'm talking a kind of a private group on Yahoo, or maybe a website uh, with a private forum, you know, that you have to have a password to to get in. My point in this is, if you're in, if you find out that half the membership refuses to uh, post up their phone number, uh, to and and a third of them won't post up their call sign because they're afraid somebody will find out about it. Of course, as you probably already know, all this information is public available, publicly available on the FCC uh, website. Uh, then you probably have the wrong club. You probably have the wrong club. You got a bunch of members that. Uh, are not going to communicate very well in the future. So take that into consideration. Do they have a way to communicate? And if they do, uh, is it, can you get in touch with other members of your club uh, if you need some help? <clears throat> or is it a secret? And finally, you won't find this out probably on the very first meeting, but after a couple of three, uh, you'll know. Did they give you any help with any problems that you might have being new to the hobby? Or did any of the Elmers in the club uh, assist you in any way in solving some problems, even if it was by telephone? You know, I, I count that as good. They don't have to come over your house, okay? They don't have to come over their house. But if they can get you on the phone or get you on a Skype call or something like that and describe uh, how to solve that problem, uh, they've been a good elmer. So the final question is, after several meetings, uh, did they help you in any way? And also after several meetings, What's your opinion of the club and its members now? So I would say after, say, three, no, probably no more than four meetings, you should have a real good, uh, either a warm, fuzzy feeling about the club or uh, you think they're a bunch of asses, one or the other, uh, by that time. Maybe it's somewhere in between. <laughs> Maybe it's somewhere in between. you got to make a judgment call. But uh, try to stick it out for a couple of three meetings at least. See what you think. And if you don't like it, go find another club. I'll guarantee you there's one in your area, especially if you're fairly near to some kind of a city, uh, say 50,000 or more, uh, that there'll be several clubs in and near that city. Uh, I'll try to post a few links in the video to kind of show you where you can find out where there's clubs in your area. Anyway, that's what I would look for, uh, and I would encourage you, as you get your tech license, as soon as you get it, to also look around for a club to join and attend a few meetings and kind of review them on these six points over the next couple of three meetings, and you can decide if you actually do want to be a member of that club. And if you do, pay your dues. Pay your dues.
Don't be a, a tight wad ham radio operator and use the repeater and go to the meetings and not pay your dues. Pay your dues. All right? Like everybody else is doing. And then everybody's on an even keel. With that said, as I usually do, I wish you clear skies of 73. Hope this helped you kind of figure out if a club is good or bad. Hope it helped you a little bit. Anyway, keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. That's what I always say. Be good. See y'all later.